Welcome to my comprehensive NAR guide. If you stumbled upon this video and you want to check out more, head down to the links below. In this video, we're going to go over the Offensive Masteries page for NAR. The Offensive Masteries page that we're going to take for NAR is built around his early game bullying potential, as well as his team fighting prowess. We're going to go with an Offensive Heavy Masteries page for NAR. This allows us to take advantage of his early and mid game damage. First mastery we're going to look at is Double Edged Sword. Double Edged Sword is a mastery that increases your damage at the expense of taking more damage. I don't take this on Nar for the fact that Nar is a very team fight heavy champion and doesn't end up doing a lot of split pushing. Double Edged Sword is mainly only effective on melee high damage split pushers, like Jax. The reason that we don't take Double Edged Sword on Nar is because Nar is both ranged and melee and he'll be in the middle of a fight a lot of the time. The thing that people don't realize with Double-Edged Sword is that you can potentially take more damage than you deal. And what I mean by that is if you look at it, as a melee champion, you deal only more damage than you receive from fighting one person. You can receive an additional 1% of damage from all five members of the enemy team. If you're a team fight heavy champion, that means that you'll only deal 2% more damage as a melee champion, but receive an additional potential 5% from all other champions on the enemy team. So if you are being attacked by two people as a melee, the mastery, you might as well have not taken it. Three people, it's not efficient at all. So taking double edged sword is not efficient on NAR. The next masteries that we're going to look at are Fury and Sorcery. Both of them give you 5% in either attack speed or cooldown reduction. Now the biggest difference between these two is that attack speed is less efficient than getting cooldown reduction. You can easily see this in that cooldown reduction is capped at 40% in game, whereas attack speed you can get over 200% attack speed and still not reach the cap depending on the champion. Now you'll notice in a lot of guides that a lot of people like to take Fury over Sorcery on Gnar. To me, it makes more sense to take Sorcery, and I'll explain why. Fury is based off of your champion's base attack speed. The lower the base attack speed, the less efficient it is to take attack speed on that champion. Gnar's base attack speed in mini form is one of the lowest in the game. If you look at Sorcery, NAR's cooldowns are actually pretty high. The higher the cooldowns, the more efficient cooldown reduction is. It's the opposite effect that attack speed has. In order to attack twice as fast, you need 100% attack speed. In order to use an ability twice as fast, you need only 50% cooldown reduction. So 5% in both of these, the most efficient to me is going to be taking sorcery especially with how high cooldowns NAR has and the amount of abilities that you do a cast as NAR. NAR does an excessive amount of casting when he's in his mega form. You're not doing a lot of auto attacking. Your main form of damage is going to be from your abilities. Um, and even in mini NAR, you're going to be using a lot of your Qs and you want Hop to be on the lowest cooldown as possible for your repositioning. So Sorcery overall is just a better mastery to take on Gnar. You'll only see Fury taken on a champion that mainly only does auto attacking. You'll see that on people like Trendemir, AD carries, things of that nature. Right clickers is what I call them. The last mastery that is on this page here is going to be Butcher. Butcher in itself is not that great. For one point you only deal two damage to monsters and minions from basic attacks and spells. It doesn't affect your champion that much. It doesn't affect other champions that much. But what it allows you to do is take a point in Feast. Nar's regen got nerfed really hard. His base regen got cut in half. Feast allows us to sustain in lane just from the last hitting. We don't even need items at all. Basically, this gives you the same amount of lifesteal that a Doran's Blade gives you if you have 100 AD, just from last hitting. 3 health is equivalent to 3% lifesteal if you have 100 AD. So Feast is a really good mastery. Even getting rid of the 1 mana that, you're, that Nar doesn't use 
The health regen is amazing and will help you sustain in lane just from getting gold. And that's why we take Feast. The other things in this row are going to be centered around whether your champion is attack based, ability based, attack damage based, and ability power based. I know those kind of sound a little bit similar, but let me explain. If your champion uses attack damage, you're going to put points into brute force. If your champion builds ability power, he's going to be taking mental force. Since Nara doesn't build ability power, we're not going to take any points in mental force. And in order to go down this line here, you need to put points in Mental Force. So everything underneath this is not going to be useful to us since we're not going to take any points into Mental Force. All they are are ability power based boosts, like an extra amount of ability power or an extra amount uh, based off your total ability power. Since we don't build it on NAR, we don't have to worry about it. Brute Force gives us attack damage per level. This isn't all that great. Um, honestly, it's not very efficient. You get a, you get 10 attack damage at level 18, so for most of the game, it's not a whole lot of damage. Um, at the early game, you're not going to notice it really at all, but what it does allow us to do is take an extra 4 attack damage from the Martial Mastery, and this is going to help us out with our abilities, last hitting. If you combine the 4 attack damage with the slight scaling from Brute Force and the Butcher Mastery, this allows us to last hit a lot easier. If you combine both of these, we're getting about 5 AD at level 1, which is about 10% of our total AD at level 1. One thing you'll see people take or not take on a Masteries page is these three on the left. Uh, it really depends on your champion, whether they're ability based or not. Nar is kind of split between both. He's also um, somebody that's going to be setting up team fights, doing a lot of initiating. And so all three of these, they're only one point a piece, which is really, really efficient when you can utilize them well, and NAR can use all of these well. The first one here is Expose Weakness. It gives all of your teammates increased attack damage on any champion that you hit with a spell. NAR has a spell called his ultimate that you can hit all five champions on the enemy team with. It allows your allies to do increased damage, which is 1%, to that champion that you hit with a spell for the next 3 seconds. Which doesn't seem like a lot, but if you multiply it by 4 other teammates, that's 4% more damage for 1 point, and that's really good. Uh, NAR has a lot of AoE, especially in Mega Form, so we can utilize Exposed Weakness throughout a fight very often. Spell Weaving and Blade Weaving go hand in hand. Spell Weaving allows your basic attacks to increase your spell damage, and Blade Weaving allows your spells to increase your basic attack damage. Nar's playstyle is a lot of weaving attacks in between spells. So essentially, anytime that we're attacking somebody, we're increasing our spell damage by a percent, and that stacks up to three times. We're doing that a lot as Nar, especially in mini form. So we're able to actually get 3% extra damage just from playing NAR. Um, same thing goes in bl Blade Weaving. While we're doing this and we're weaving attacks in between spells, we're stacking damage based off of spells dealing damage, and that's increasing our basic attack damage by 1%. This is going to increase our basic attacks by 3%. So all together, with Spell Weaving and Blade Weaving, this is an extra 6% damage just from weaving attacks in between spells. The next thing next to Blade Weaving that you're going to see is Warlord. We're not going to take any points in the Warlord. And the reason being is Warlord only increases bonus attack damage. And bonus attack damage, you can only really get from items. You can get a little bit from Runes and Masteries, but mainly, any attack damage that you buy is going to be bonus attack damage. And as NAR, we're not going to be buying a lot of attack damage. We're going to buy a little bit here and there. But 2% is not worth it for 1 point. If you put all 3 points, you'll get 6% extra bonus attack damage. If you look at that over the course of a game, even if we get 100 extra attack damage from the items that we're going to buy, which gets pretty close if you're full build. By full build, that's only going to give you an extra 2 attack damage. It's it's not worth it to put a point in the Warlord. 
Now the other things down below it are Frenzy and Devastating Strikes. Frenzy, you're only going to take if you're going to be buying a lot of crit. We're not going to be buying a lot of crit with Gnar. Anytime you crit somebody, you get 5% attack speed, and that stacks up to 3 times. You need quite a bit of attack speed to be able to crit multiple times within 3 seconds, and we're not going to buy a lot of crit, so Frenzy's not worth it for us. 80 carries? Yeah, it's worth it. It's only 1 point, but Gnar's not an 80 carry, so we're not going to spec into Frenzy. Devastating Strikes is very excellent. It's very similar to Warlord, only this affects all of your damage, not just your bonus attack damage. You get 6% armor and magic pen, which Nar has mixed damage, so this is going to help out both our passive W damage on Hyper, as well as all of our spells and our basic attacks from the armor shred. And this is what's really going to help us bully around the lane early on and as the game goes on. Our base damage is pretty high on Nar, and one of the ways to maximize your base damage is to shred armor. The thing far to the right over here is Arcane Blade. This is for ability powered base champions that are going to auto attack a lot, or deal magic damage on their auto attacks. Since it's based off your total ability power and we're not going to buy ability power, it's not going to be worth it to take anything in here. The last thing here in the offensive page is Havoc. It's pretty self-explanatory. For one point, you get 3% increased damage for abilities, basic attacks. Any Anytime you deal damage, you're going to deal an extra 3% increased damage. So this is the last thing that you can take in the offensive page. So we're always going to take it when we go this far down into the offensive tree. And so that about wraps it up for the offensive side. If you enjoyed it, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to do to help me make better guides, please put it down in the comments below or comment onto the guide. Rat Jungle. When did I make this page?